Now, with all of the economic turmoil that was predicted by Gerald Salente and others going on that we covered before we went to break, I wanted to get Gerald Salente on to get his take on what's happening. I mean, again, S&P warns of cuts, another U.S. downgrade coming. Uh, that's going to certainly change the way we live. QE3, they're now announcing that after promising a year ago they wouldn't. Housing prices hit post-bubble low. Think about the position we're in here and the very people that we've been bailing out, $16 trillion here, another $10 trillion there, the big mega banks, the white shoe boys, as Gerald Salente calls them. Well, the prostitutes, they're coming out saying that the people that did this to us, they've got the answers for us, and it's raise our taxes, cut our standard of living, and give our money to them. So I wanted to get Gerald Salente on because we've got a few articles here I'm going to show you right now. The Wall Street Journal, all of them reported on what the uh, different people involved investigating the missing $1.2 billion from MF Global. They're saying it vaporized. They're saying it just vaporized. And again, we uh, have those uh, up on screen. We'll uh, show people a couple of those right now. They're just saying that it disappeared, that it uh, went into a black hole somewhere. Uh, now, again, Gerald Salente was a victim of this. They kept his money. Then they uh, changed his statement and said it's been adjusted and took a bunch of his money. But for others, they're getting nothing. Now, it came out within the first two days, just to re remind you, in F Reuters and Forbes, that most of the money had been wired to J.P. Morgan in London and others. So they know where it went. And now you have, what, a month ago, Corzine uh, caught the head of the CFT uh, or, or the, uh, uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange uh, he came out, uh, Duffy, I guess is his name, and said, hey, he did know. Corzine didn't know, and I'm not going to lie for him. But Corzine didn't get in trouble for that. So, so there's the basics. Gerald Salente joins us to give us his take on that and the rest of the world economy. Uh, Gerald, thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, it's always my pleasure being on with you, Alex. Man, I tell you, you couldn't write this stuff in a weird uh, uh, you know, science fiction attempt at, 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 at satire. Kurt Vonnegut, as you know, wrote books about cartoonishly police state, absurdist future realities. This outdoes any of that, Gerald. Well, it, it outdoes it, and, but what it is is clear. It's the writing of prostitutes. Look how they use the language, vaporized. Yeah, it just, just disappeared. It vaporized. Could you imagine if one of the white shoe boys didn't do this? How about if an Italian, you know, somebody like, you know, a mafia guy was caught? Oh, boy, would it be different. How about if it was somebody that they didn't like was caught? Oh, it would be a whole different story. Vaporized? It was like the Wall Street Journal's guy who wrote the story came from J.P. Morgan Chase. Alex. Everybody I know in the industry knows that Corzine knew, J.P. Morgan Chase knew, everybody knew it was coming down. But look, Corzine raised, a, what, $500,000 plus recently for the Obama campaign. So it's a hands off for him. Yeah, anybody that breaks the minor little infraction of the law, man, they got you. And Jack, you're dead, but not him. November, December, January, February, four months. Four months this thing has been going on. Oh, we can't find $1.2 billion. Who could get away with this? Only them, and only with the help of the prostitutes. Well, I just showed a headline where they were saying, you're just out of luck with your money. I mean, when you wire $1,000, there's a record. When you wire over 10000 a criminal investigation is opened. He wires $1.2 billion. The head of the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, as you know, comes out and says, hey, he, he was involved. He did give the order. But Corzine says... Hey, I wasn't involved as CEO in this. I mean, and he gets caught lying and no one gets in trouble. Obama gets caught shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. He's not getting in trouble. I mean, this is rule by criminals, Gerald. When is it going to end? How bad is it going to get? Because if they're getting away with this, hell, they might just start doing what Blackwater did in Iraq, according to federal documents, just shooting people for fun. I mean, why not? I mean, maybe, maybe uh, you know, of course, I don't show up at your door with a crap sandwich and make you eat it. I mean, I mean, whoa, he's God, I guess. 
Well, again, and he's not alone here. This is from the Financial Times uh, just on the 30th, January 30th. Moody's, quote, did not understand 6.3 billion MF Global bet on European debt. Moody's Investor Services did, quote, did not have any understanding that MF Global, the failed futures broker, had placed a $6.3 billion proprietary bet on the debt of troubled European sovereigns until about a week uh, uh, until about a week before the brokerage filed for bankruptcy. Moody's, these are the people that raided all of that junk triple A. These are supposed to be the rating agencies. Oh, we didn't have an understanding. It's all a fix. The whole game is rigged, and they're screwing every one of us. Look how they get away with that kind of crap. And listen, Alex, as you know, that's why I believe that President Obama signed into law the National Defense Authorization Act. So now it allows the military to take out people like you and me who complain because the whole thing is crashing down. As you said, Corzon could show up at your door and make you eat a crap sandwich because they'll have the goons behind them. This is criminality at levels that are actually at biblical proportions. Remember, Christ driving the money changes out of the temple. That's all these guys are. The name changed. It went from money changes to loan sharks. Now we call them bankers and financial experts. Well, you know, they waited, as you said, almost four months to go ahead and just say we're stealing it. They stalled everybody and said, oh, you might get some of it back someday. And then now the government, the media, they're all acting like they don't know where it went. But they already reported where it went. It's just now J.P. Morgan's like, shut up. You don't know where the money went. Everybody's like, yes, sir, you're our leader. But expanding on what you talked about, about the ratings agencies, the governments certainly are insolvent. But compared to the mega banks that we give the money to, which they then loan back to us at loan sharking rates, as you said, the ratings agency, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, uh, all of them, they certify the, the you know, corrupt banks as wonderful and their, and their derivative garbage that's worthless as AAA gold, the best it is. And now at the behest of the banks, they're saying Europe, the U.S., they're lowering credit ratings. So, the, so we're in hock to the banksters who are the open fraudsters. I mean, if, they're, if, if Corazon can get away with this and the mega banks can get away with it, then we should get Bernie Madoff out of jail and make him king of the earth because, uh, I mean, he's just like them. Maybe we'll make him, I got an idea. How about Treasury Secretary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd be perfect. And again, look at their track record. I was on your show the last time. I read to you from the minutes of the Federal Reserve meeting how they all got it wrong, Bernanke, Geithner, all the people that are telling us what to do. So let's take this over and see what's really going on. Let's flash over to Europe for a moment. Have you seen the latest headlines? Just before Christmas, when no one was watching, as we know, and you reported on it, the European Central Bank dumped in eh, about $700 billion dollars for the banks who are having a money problem, they gave them the money and virtually no interest rates. They used that money so they could buy these worthless bonds from Portugal, Italy, Spain, Greece, and Ireland, and others. And then what they're doing now, this is great. They're going to pump in about another 500, 600 billion to bail out the banks again through the European Central Bank. And by the way, this all ties in, Alex. Have you seen how gold prices have been moving back up? Yes. Because the smart money knows what the deal is. You already mentioned that the Fed is hinting about QE3. The European Central Banks have their QEs going on now. They're devaluing the currencies in front of our eyes. But it gets better. Oh. Because 
Now, <laughs> for the Greeks to get that dough, the Germans just put out a directive, basically, not basically stating, stating that the Greeks have to turn over their sovereignty to the European Central Banks and the European Monetary Union. That's right. They're not going to be able to do anything as a sovereign government. The European Monetary Union is now taking over Greece. This whole thing is collapsing. I, you know, I guess the Germans didn't defeat, you know, they, they occupied Greece a little while during World War II. Now they could occupy it. They've already sent one guy over there to go over their books and tell them how to spend the money. Now they're bringing the whole squad in there again. It's an occupation. The bankers are occupying the world. And let's be clear. Let's be clear. I read it in The Economist everywhere. They're saying it's good to have the technocrats. And yes, you have no sovereignty in towns in Rhode Island, major cities in Michigan. There's headlines. I know you've seen them because you've covered it saying no more democracy in this Rhode Island town. No more democracy in this town in Michigan. Uh, the, the state is taking you into receivership. No more city council. And we're going to put a corporation over you. And they're just going to raise all the fees. And you take Greece. As you know, most of their debt is what the government signed them on to for the bankers. And now the bankers who created all this debt, they're going to tell them what to do. But as you, I also saw an article in Reuters. You know there's now rebellions in Sicily actually with the real pitchforks because they've taken their guns. The, the people are going to resist. And I don't think, I mean, I'm reading where in Greece they're saying, and, and, and in France, that they're going to raise VAT on, on everybody's businesses and, and kill them when they're all going bankrupt to pay the bankers. What do they think is going to happen? People are going to start going wild, as you've said. Exactly. And they're going wild, as you're pointing out. And again, when you think of how ludicrous this is, that we have to bail out the bankers, that a guy who started this under Bush, what was his name, Paulson, the Goldman Sachs guy that was playing Treasury Secretary, made up this whole thing, warned the people that the whole system was falling apart if we didn't come out with TARP and bail out the banks. Obama picked it up, and he doubled up on it about six times, along with the Federal Reserve. This whole big lie that we have to bail out the banks. But it's worse than that, because just what they're doing to Greece and Ireland and Italy and Portugal and Spain, they're doing to the everyday person with your credit cards, with your car loans, with your student loans, with your mortgages, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, your controlled, owned, signed, sealed, and delivered as a slave for the rest of your life by the bankers, the money changers, Listen, Alex, it didn't make the biblical proportions because it was a small game out there. Again, the only time that Jesus Christ becomes violent is when he picks up a whip to drive the money changers out of the temple, turns over their tables, and guess what? They killed them. That's right.